Welcome to our second video. Today we're going to read a story called Chef Huey by Anne Cameron. Again, make sure you're sitting somewhere comfortably and we'll start. <clears throat> Food should be different from the way it is, I said to my mum. Then I wouldn't mind eating it. How should it be different? My mum asked. I don't exactly know, I said. Well, maybe you will work it out and be a chef, my mum said. What's a chef? I asked. A chef is a very good cook who sometimes invents new things to eat, my mum told me. The next day, we went to the supermarket. I saw pictures of chefs on some of the food packages. They were all smiling. I wondered if when they were little, they had to eat what their parents told them to eat. Maybe that's why they became chefs, so they could invent foods that they liked to eat. Probably that's when they became happy. The chef with the biggest smile of all was Chef Marco, on the tin of Chef Marco's spaghetti with tomatoes. Please get that tin, I said to my mum. I want to take it home. I wanted to invent something with it, but I wasn't sure what. At first, I couldn't think of anything it went with. Instead, I thought of cakes like pillows. I thought of carrots that would be fastened together around a meatloaf to make skyscrapers on our plates. One night, I did tie some carrots around my own meatloaf my dad had made but the strings that fastened them came loose in the oven and the skyscrapers fell down. It was the night before Mother's Day when I thought of a brand new food. I could see it in my mind. Something yellow. A happy yellow food. One that didn't mind being eaten. In the morning, Julian and I were going to bring my mum breakfast in bed. Julian was going to fry eggs. I told him I had a better idea. What is it? He asked. Banana spaghetti, I said. Banana spaghetti? He said. I've never heard of it. It's a new invention, I said. It will be 100% a surprise. Julian likes surprises. So, how do we make it? He asked. Simple, I said. We have bananas and we have spaghetti. All we have to do is put them together. Julian thought about it. We'd better go get up early tomorrow, he said, just in case. At 6am we went downstairs very quietly and turned on the lights in the kitchen. We went to work. We mashed up three ripe bananas. I took out the tin of Chef Marco's spaghetti and tomato sauce. In the picture on the tin, Chef Marco had his arms spread out wide with a steaming platter balanced above his head on one hand. I decided to stand that way when we brought Mum the banana spaghetti. I would go upstairs ahead of Julian with her plate, so Julian couldn't take all the credit. I held the tin and Julian opened it. We tipped out the spaghetti in a bowl. It had a lot of tomato sauce on it, the colour of blood. We have to get the tomato off, I said. We put the spaghetti in the sink and washed it with hot water. It got nice and clean. We put it on a plate. Uh, it looks kind of spongy, Julian said. It will be good, I said. We just need to put the sauce on it. Julian dumped all the mashed banana on top. Banana spaghetti, I said. Taste it, Julian said. But I wasn't sure I wanted to. Um, you try it, I said. Julian tasted it. His lips puckered up. He wiped his mouth with kitchen roll. Oh, 
It'll be better when it's hot, he said. We put it in a pan on the stove and got it very hot. Extremely hot. The banana scorched. It smelled like burning rubber. Julian turned off the stove. We looked into the pan. Not all of it burned, Julian said. Just the bottom. We can put the rest on the plates. We did. Then we looked at it. Banana spaghetti was not the way I had imagined it. It wasn't yellow, it was brown. It wasn't happy, it looked rather miserable. It looked worse than turnips, worse than aubergine, worse than baked fish eye. Maybe it's better than we think, Julian said. When you don't like some stuff, Mum always tells you it's better than you think. Will she eat it? I asked. Well, she'll eat it because we made it, Julian said. Uh, that might not be a good enough reason, I said. You can tell her just to try a little bit, Julian advised. That seemed like a good idea. Let's take it upstairs, I said. I handed Mum's plate to him. No, Julian said. You take it up. It's your invention. He handed the plate back to me. I put the plate on a tray with a knife and a fork and a napkin. I started up the stairs. I tried holding the tray above my head on one hand, but it was very tippy. I couldn't do it the way Chef Marco did, and I wasn't happy like Chef Marco either. I wish Julian was with me. I climbed five steps. It's better than you think, I told myself. On the sixth step, I just sat down with the tray in my lap and stayed there. I heard the door to my parents' room open. I heard feet hurrying down the stairs. My dad's. He stopped when he saw me. Huey, he said, what are you doing? Thinking, I said, what are you doing? Oh, going for coffee. What's that stuff you're holding? It, it's banana spaghetti, I said. I invented it. Julian and I made it for mum. We thought it would be good, but it didn't come out the way I wanted it to. My dad sat by me and looked at it. I passed it to him. It does seem to have a problem, he said. Maybe several problems. He sniffed at it and wrinkled his nose and he got far away. It looked as if he was comparing it with all the banana foods he'd ever tasted in his life. He looked as wise as Chef Marco. Banana spaghetti. He said, it's a good idea. You just need to make it differently. How? Spaghetti is usually made with flour and eggs, Dad explained. But I think we could make it from flour and banana. After I have my coffee, we can try. We went to the kitchen. Julian had the eggs out. He was getting a frying pan. You can put that frying pan away, Julian, my dad said. We're making banana spaghetti. He flicked the switch on the coffee maker. In a minute, coffee spurted out and he poured himself a cup, cup and sipped it. I'm ready, he said. Peel me three bananas, boys. We did. Now put them in this bowl and mash them, he said. We did. They came out sort of white, just like the first ones we mashed. And flour wasn't going to change the colour. Dad, I said, I want banana spaghetti to be yellow. It's not going to be yellow, is it? Not without help, my dad said. Look in the cupboard. Maybe there's some yellow food colouring in there. We took everything out of the cupboard. Toothpicks, napkins, salt burnt ointment, tins of soup, instant coffee, six pennies, and a spider's web. At the very back, I found a tiny bottle of yellow stuff. 
I showed it to my dad. That's it, he said. Put some in, Huey. Just a few drops. I did. Stir that yellow around, he said. We took spoons and did it. Bring me the flour, he said. We did. He dumped some in a bowl. This is hard to mix, my dad said, so you can let me do it. With a fork, he mixed the flour and banana into a dough. Julian, spread some flour on this counter, he said. Julian did. My dad set the dough on the floured counter. I have to knead this dough, he said. You boys clean the cupboard and put everything back in. We did, except for the pennies. We asked if we could have them. My dad said yes. We put them in our pockets. Dad rolled up the sleeves of his pyjamas and pushed the dough back and forth under his hands, twisting and turning and pressing it hard until it was smooth and not sticky. The dough has to rest so it will be stretchy, he said. He covered it with an upside down bowl and put a big pot of water on the stove to boil. What should go in the sauce? he asked. It's your invention, Huey, so you decide. I tried to think of the best ingredient in the world. What about whipped cream? I asked. I never had any spaghetti that way, but I thought it would be good. Whipped cream! A great idea, my dad said. I poured cream in a bowl. Dad got the electric mixer out and I beat the cream. How about sugar? Julian said. Sugar is right, Dad said. Julian poured some in. Now, said Dad, what about spices? How about oregano? And he gave me the oregano bottle so I could smell it. It smelled like pizza. No, I said. How about cinnamon? He asked. Julian and I both smelled the cinnamon. Yes, we said. And how about ginger? He handed me the jar. Julian and I both smelled it. Julian said no. I said yes. Banana spaghetti is mine, so I won. My dad shook in some, shook in some ginger, and then he beat the cream till it was thick and fluffy. How about sliced banana? Julian said. I said yes. We sliced a banana. My dad stirred it into the cream. We all tasted the sauce and it was delicious. Now, my dad said, the spaghetti. He uncovered the spaghetti dough and asked us for the rolling pin and the flour. He rolled the dough and then we rolled it some more. Finally, when it was thin and stretched out like a blanket, he folded it over twice and cut it into strips. Julian and I separated the strips and unfolded them. They were long and smooth and yellow. We held them in our hands gently, like Christmas tree tinsel. The water in the pot was boiling, as if it wanted to jump out. We stood on chairs by the stove and dropped in all the spaghetti strings at once. They sank and swam in the pot for just a minute before my dad dipped in a fork and fished one out. He tasted it. Done, he said. Quick, get the plates ready. We did. Dad sent a strainer in the sink. He poured everything out of the pot. All the water washed down the drain. The spaghetti stayed in the strainer. He divided the spaghetti on the plates and shook some cinnamon over it. Cinnamon over it. I spread the sauce on top. It looked good, except for one thing. Just a minute, I said. I found a bag of chopped peanuts and tossed some on top of each plate of the banana spaghetti. Is that everything, Huey? My dad asked. Yes, I said. Delivery time, Julian said. I went first with two plates. 
Julian came behind me with the other two plates. My dad came last with the silverware, coffee and orange juice on a tray. My hands were full. I knocked on the bedroom door with the edge of one plate. Come in, my mum said. I hoped she would just be waking up, but she was sitting up in bed reading a book. She looked hungry. I set one plate on the dressing table. I brought the other plate to her the way Chef Marco would have done, held it out like a gift. Happy Mother's Day, I said. What's this? She said. Just banana spaghetti, I said. My dad handed her a fork. She tasted it. Delicious, she said. Very strange, but very delicious. Dad and Julian helped me, I said, but it's my invention. We arranged everything so we could all eat on the bed. When we had eaten all the spaghetti, we had second helpings of the sauce. My mum scooped up the last bit of her sauce with a spoon. Banana spaghetti, what a wonderful breakfast she said, and I was very proud. Just yesterday, there was no such thing as banana spaghetti in the whole world, and now there is. Just like once, the telephone didn't exist, or the television, or space stations. A lot of people believed those things could never exist, but then some great inventor made them. I am an inventor, and a chef, and I know what I want for dinner on my birthday. Banana spaghetti, with chocolate shavings over the sauce and seven yellow candles on top.